Alright guys, so now we know what EMs are, but you guys are probably getting ticked off because you're like, okay, that last tutorial was a waste of time. I learned what EMs were, but I still don't know how to make responsive websites. Getting pretty mad about the punch me in the face. Well, calm down because in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys exactly how to use that knowledge to make a flexible web layout. So the first thing I want to do is this. Go ahead and get rid of all those divs because we don't need those anymore. And also clear out everything from the CSS file. So we pretty much have two blank templates. Now the first thing I want to do is this. I want to make a div in here and we'll just give it the ID of, a, I don't know, wrapper. So this is actually going to be our very first flexible or responsive web element. So, you know, congratulations. This is a big moment for us. So save that right here and actually if you want to type something in there just so we have I don't know something to look at I'll type babies have rabies but you can type whatever you want alright so now we have a blank element on the screen and if we looked at it pretty boring so let's go ahead and hop over in our CSS and I'll show you guys this what I want to do is actually since this is a div as you guys know divs are pretty much boxes or containers that can um, hold a bunch of other elements so just so we can distinguish this div from the rest of the screen I'll make the div white in the background I don't know like a gray color so the main body of the website I'll put um, background color you can have it anything you want just don't make it white I'm gonna make mine 222 which is gonna be like a dark gray this color right here so my div remember we give the ID of wrapper so ID equals wrapper let's add some properties to this now the first thing I want to do is give it a background color of white and that is just because if we don't we're not going to be able to tell it's just going to look like it's blending into the background so what we're gonna do is we're gonna say that this is the meat of our website this is pretty much the main layout aside from the background that everything is contained in so the backgrounds white that's good so far um let's go ahead and give it a width of 1024 pixels since that'll look pretty good on you know most of the screens we'll also give it a margin and we'll put five pixels auto now whenever you do this this means the margin of the top and bottom is five pixels so five pixels from the top and bottom so it isn't like right butted up against the top it looks kind of weird that way and auto means adjust it so it gives you an automatic value for the left and the right and what this essentially does is it centers it right in the middle of your web page because for some reason whoever is making the CSS the rules for it in HTML5 they made it really hard to center stuff and um, I don't know so this is how you center a web page now for the border I'll just give it I don't know a border of like five pixels and solid in red so let me go ahead and save this and I'll show you guys what we got alright pretty cool so we got a nice centered web page right here and uh, let me just go ahead and shrink this alright still looking good alright I see what the problem is here so look at this border right here when your screen's big enough, it looks great. But once you start shrinking it, your crap starts getting cut off right here. So the website actually goes to like out here. But since we're using pixels in this old cool, or excuse me, this old school crap, it's giving us a bunch of problems. So I want to actually, I'm not even gonna. I'll comment this out. I won't completely delete it. So this will show you guys the difference between a good responsive layout or responsive web design in a bad one so first of all like I said whenever you see pixels it means okay I did something wrong so let's copy this and transition it all over to something other than pixels now instead of a width a fixed width a fixed width means no matter how small or how big your window is it's gonna be the same amount of pixels no matter what well we don't want anything cemented in there we want this flexible because that's what we're learning so what you can do instead is you can actually give it a percentage now what this is going to do is it's going to say 
no matter how big my window is, always make this inner object, this white thing right here, 90% of it. So if it's 2,000 pixels, it's going to be 1,800. If it's 100 pixels, it's going to be 90 pixels. It's always going to adapt to the size of your screen. So this way it actually flexes limitless. It's very cool. So the margin, of course, this is bad too because, I don't know, is 5 pixels like 1 inch on some screens? Is 5 pixels like 10 inches on other screens? Maybe maybe 5 pixels is way too much on a phone. So instead, what we want to do is we want to use those things called EMs. So if you use something like 0.4 EM, what it's going to do is it's going to go grab the default font size for whatever device you're on, and it's going to adjust the margin to that appropriately. So it's going to be more consistent viewing experience no matter how big your screen size is. So of course, you're going to want to adjust this based on how everything looks, but this is the basics of how you make an adaptive, flexible layout. So check this out now. So even though the sizes didn't match up exactly, and if we wanted to, we can be like, okay, 85 and figure all that out. But I just want to show you guys the basics right now. So right now, check this out. Before, we would start to get cut off right around here. But since we have 90%, no matter how small or how big this is, this inner box is always flexing to 90% of the main container, which is the black or the um, dark gray part. So that's pretty cool right there. And also, even though I don't have like different devices to show you guys, I just have my browser right now. This border right here is 0.4 EM. So what that does, like I said, is it grabs the default font size and the border is 0.4 or 40% of that font right there. So later on, once I show you guys how to make different um, font sizes depending on your device, the border is going to shrink and grow accordingly. So this is a lot better and a lot more adaptable for every single device than this crap right here which pretty much cements your web design in there and no matter what device is displaying it, it doesn't really care. It's saying this is how I do it. It's kind of like hard-headed hard -headed and stubborn. So that is the very basics of how to make a flexible layout using percentages instead of pixels and also using EMs instead of pixels as well. So hopefully you guys um, learn a little something. Again, I'm going to be taking all of this, posting it on my forum. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.